Let's talk about systemd dependencies and execution order. This applies to how units are started, uh, how they establish their dependencies, or how systemd establishes what is going to be affected by an action, and um, in what specific order units are going to come up, and how much leeway systemd has uh, in, in figuring out that order on its own. So uh, my references here are these, plus a few Stack Overflow uh, articles that I look up every single time I do this because it is simply not intuitive. Basically, you have um, kind of two different things that are happening, and it's a little complicated, but it's actually what makes Systemd kind of powerful for, for ordering dependencies and execution order. First, there are dependencies that you can define, and then second, there is explicit ordering, so execution order. I'm going to go through it bit by bit, kind of the way that I learned it that made sense to me. Now, I'm going to leave some specifics out. Uh, you can look at the system demand page to really get into the nitty gritty. But basically, the general ordering that you'll see in unit files is things like wants, wanted by, and requires, and required by. It does not mean that, oh, this will have absolutely been started before, uh, you know, friendly recovery target is achieved. It simply says that they should, they should be activated together. So all of this general ordering stuff only answers the question, which, which units are affected, which, which units want to exist, kind of coexist together. So you have the weakest type of dependency, where like you're basically just saying please activate these things together but like no big deal if you don't system d thanks uh, and that's just wants and wanted by it'd be nice if these things were started together a slightly stronger dependency is requires and it's inverse required by what that's basically saying is if a prerequisite fails like you can't bring this up it actually needs the prerequisite to be activated together and here's the really confusing thing. It does not say that it must already be started before this comes up. It just says, hey, system D, these units should be activated together. They both, uh, you know, one kind of depends on the other. What I'm saying is going to be clear in just a second. Explicit ordering is what you usually think you're doing when you're messing around with requires and required by. And this is maybe the thing that took me the longest to get about how system D does this. I would type in requires, like, oh, Nginx requires the network to be up. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's a much weaker than explicitly ordering, um, where, like, this, the, the requires might not fully be up by the time the thing that defines that requirement is started. So you could have errors, you could have whatever, and you're like, why, isn't, why aren't they starting in perfect order? Well, it's because they're just being started together. They say that they require each other. But explicit ordering is different. It's done differently. It's done with before and after. This is what you usually think you're doing <laughs> with requires. So execution order is saying in what order explicitly are these units started? And it's optional, right? So if you don't put this, systemd will just go by your wants and requires and just figure out some order that satisfies that. But these are explicit. So when you say nginx, has to come after network online target or console has to come after the network is online. This explicitly says this target has to have been started and reached or this unit um, has to have been started and the target has to have been reached before you start up. Well, in this case, uh, Ubuntu's incredibly annoying and stupid message of the day news service, which reaches out onto the internet for absolutely no reason on like all of their I don't know if they do this on the servers anymore, but oh my god, what a horrible design. Anyway, this is usually what you want to be doing. Um, because these general things leave a lot uh, of kind of leeway for, how, for, for the actual order that systemd picks. Now, the more you use these, especially in a chain of things that you manage yourself, the more likely you're going to get yourself into like a sys5 init style battle of like you have to... Now explicitly uh, figure out exactly what order things are going to get started in. And you can screw that up and then things won't come up. And like, so 
overusing this, if you're using this a lot, like you're gonna have to do more work to ensure that things really are starting in exactly the order you want. Systemd does less here, right? You're telling it exactly what order to start things in. So that's kind of, I, in my opinion, that's the most complicated thing about how Systemd actually behaves and, and how things are named. Um, but once you understand it, it makes sense. And so the shorthand that I want to teach you for this is that basically before and after are the things you're going to use the most. Probably after is the thing you're going to use the most. And um, the other thing I want to tell you is when you are managing requirements like this, you should always prefer, and that's why these inverses exist, so you can do it from both sides of a dependency. You should always do it on the thing that you are managing yourself or creating yourself. You should not be editing like system units that came pre-installed, might change with a new version of a package or something, and manage your dependencies there like wants and then your custom service that you're actually writing the unit file for in some system unit file, right? What you really, you always want to do in the thing you are managing, if there's a want, then you put a wanted by some system managed thing, right? You want to keep the changes you're making on a system should be as atomic as possible. It should be as constrained to a single file or whatever for each change. And this gives you the ability to do that. So again, the weakest, again, dependencies now, they're not hard like ordering requirements. They're simply the weakest one is wants, like you should, you should activate these together, please. Requires, you have to activate these things together. And then your explicit ordering. Okay, now when you're actually getting to the nitty gritty of starting A, then B, then C, well, C comes before B, and B comes absolutely after network online or whatever. I guess it would be A. I guess I can. can't do a reverse alphabet. The last thing you should kind of know, there are others uh, that you can use. It's not just wanted by, required by, before and after. I see these used a lot less. They are useful in some cases. Requisite is like requires, but uh, must already be active at that time. Uh, these are basically quoted directly from ULSA, so I'm giving credit here. Uh, binds to is also like a requires, but stronger. Part of, um, this one's mildly useful if you have weird misbehaving strangely designed services. It's like a requires, but it trips only when you're starting or stopping services so that if you need two separate units to come up or down together because they need each other, then part of makes sense. I think it's actually well named. And then conflicts, you'll see this um, occasionally when you're like installing a service, I don't know, like DNS mask that's gonna conflict with something that's already installed on the system and kind of take over in, in DNS masks case, DNS um, and local DNS caching and stuff like that. Um, you might put a conflict in there, you enable it and then put a conflicts and systemd will know not to start whatever units you say it conflicts with. So it ex excludes two units from being active simultaneously and that conflicts can be declared on either side. Um, so like if you have bind or something, you can put it in there if that's what you're managing or if you're installing um, you know, another DNS server, you can put it in there. So this, again, pay close attention to this. It's probably gonna get you a few tries to understand this. But again, almost always when you're thinking, when, especially when you're coming from the older way of doing things, you're, you're tending to think in this explicit ordering way. And that's what's gonna get you because requires <laughs> seems like what you were doing in sys5 init. Um, but really that's before and after in systemd. And these wants and requires are really just general outlines of dependency management and how it's used by systemd to kind of trace what units are going to be affected by an action like during boot like we're approaching this target you know what units are actually going to be uh, touched by this or, or like brought up or down or something's done with them 